Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word that is written in heaven, established forever. We thank you that your word is a seed. And whenever it is preached, it is a seed that is sown in the fertile grind, grounds of our heart. Yes. And that when that seed is sown in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it will grow and produce 30, 60, and a hundredfold in all our lives. Father, thank you that you are the sower of the seed. And thank you, O oh Jesus, that you're speaking to us this morning. That our hearts are open and our hearts are ready to receive. In Jesus' most holy name, amen. amen. Are you ready to receive the word of God today? Sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word that the spirit of the living God laid in my heart to share with you all this morning, uh, the title of the message is called Recipe for Divine Success. Recipe for Divine Success. Now this divine success would include work and also winning souls. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about recipe for divine success for at work and also for winning souls. Amen. Amen. Now, when we talk about recipe, uh, particularly any kind of recipe would have many ingredients. I remember receiving a recipe that really helped my life enormously. Uh, I don't know whose recipe it is, whether it's Amy's or Lynn's or Lynn's mother's, I don't know, but I received a recipe from Amy about how to make a pancake. Now that recipe has saved me many breakfasts. <laughs> and it's a very simple recipe for me to keep. It's um, one egg and a cup of flour the exact measure for the cup of flour has to be matched with milk. And so you whip the egg. And so this Sunday morning you come to church and you have the recipe for making pancake. Amen. Amen. So you mix the uh, milk in it and then you put the flour in it. And she said it has to be self-raising flour. Okay, she, she did say that. Self-raising flour. So that it's soft, you know, the kids eat it. Amen. But then I decided... I know better. <laughs> so what happened is I went to Tesco and I, I, I looked at the shelf and it said uh, a buckwheat powder. So I thought, well, self-raising plow, you know, we've tried that. The kids have been eating this stuff or I, although I bought organic self-raising, but it doesn't make no difference. It's still self-raising flour. And so I saw this buckwheat thing on the, on the shelf. So I thought, okay, that was more pricier than the other one. So I thought maybe because it's pricier, it'll be nice. Okay. So I bought the thing. Don't follow my, some of my cooking instructions. But so when I made that pancake with the buckwheat thing, the, 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 the batter wouldn't even come off the thing. Now this is glue. I could have gone all over Keatley, sticking wall posters everywhere. Because this was better than what any glue would have done. Now, I made pancake, but the thing was so pulling apart that nobody had breakfast for pan nobody had pancake for breakfast that day. People reverted to kind, polite way of saying, I think there's some cereals in the cupboard. So I ended up chucking the whole lot. The recipe for divine success is a recipe. And for a recipe to work, we need the right ingredients. And sometimes we think we know better and we change what was told to us as part of the recipe. And I want to say the most important, the most powerful part of the recipe to divine success was spoken of by Jesus in the book of Luke chapter number 4. In the book of Luke chapter number 4, Jesus comes back after 40 days of fasting and prayer. He is now ready to minister the power of God to the people of this world. 40 days he was without food. He had overcome the temptations that Satan had posed to him. And at the end of the 40 days, the Bible says in verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 18, he went to Nazareth. 
his hometown, he opened up the scriptures and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He found it from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, and he began to read it. And um, he closed the book and he said to them, this is, this what you are hearing is now fulfilled in your hearing, this is fulfilled. I'm reading it and this is fulfilled. I am he on whom the spirit of the Lord is. And the people were really amazed at why he is saying this stuff. And they said, are you not uh, the son of Joseph the carpenter? And at that point, Jesus begins to explain to them something significant. And he said in verse 24 and 25, 26 and 27 he begins to say most assuredly I said you know prophet is accepted in his own country but verse 25 he begins to tell them while the people are opposing this declaration of who he is I want you to notice the context while the people are opposing the declaration of who he is he comes up with a statement that says on that day when Elijah was sent, but I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when heaven was shut up for three years and six months. And there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon. It's not even Israel. To a woman who was a widow. Verse 27. And there were many lepers. Where in Israel. In the there were many lepers in Israel. In the time of Elisha the prophet. And none of them was cleansed. Except Naaman the Syrian. Uh, an interesting scenario. So I want you to notice that there were so many widows in Israel, but Jesus was, uh, Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath and Sidon, which is not even part of Israel. And also there were many lepers in Israel, but it was Naaman the Syrian that God healed. But I want you to observe what the scripture says. Jesus is saying this. Jesus is saying this, there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. And Elijah was sent by God to this widow somewhere in Zarephath. I began to look at what is it special about the widow in Zarephath and what is so special about Naaman that God sent Elijah the prophet to the widow in Zarephath and God sent Elisha the prophet to Naaman uh, to cure his leprosy. And I observe both of them have something very similar in them. And that is the number one recipe for divine success, whether it be work or it be soul winning or it be generally just prospering in life. And that is the ability to follow instruction. After building up, it seems a very simple thing. But when God saw so many widows are there. But which one? When a prophet says, make me a cake first. When they only have a little bit of flour and they were planning to just make a little um, bread from it. Not even a cake. Would the instruction be received and that person will actually follow the instruction of doing what they were told to do. Amen. Remember that Jesus starts by saying a prophet is not recognized in his own place. I'm telling you some things, but then the people here, the people are saying, you know what? Do the miracles that you're doing in Capernaum. Why are you not doing the miracles that you would have done in Capernaum here? And Jesus answers them that there's a quality about Naaman. When Naaman was told to go dip in Jordan seven times, Naaman was like, I'm a commander, I'm a big man, why should I go do that? And the servant girl said to Naaman, Sir, if the man of God told you to do something extravagant, like give him ten uh, uh, horses or something like that, you would have done it. But when a simple instruction is given, why do you say, why should I do something that is so simple? Don't say it's beneath you. Listen, look at Naaman, a commander in chief is keen to follow the direction that comes from a servant girl who is a lot younger, who is a lot smaller, 
who may be considered as who are you in sight of that commander. Both of these people had the skill of following instructions in the most unusual situations. And Jesus highlights it. Because a lot of the time, this is really where our downfall is. Amen. Amen. Now, I know you may not have experienced any of these situations. But I have in my family. Well, with three sons and three boys, it's not always the... Uh, uh, calmest atmosphere uh, they're boys and they have energy and so there are times when as a mother I tell them don't beat your brothers up <laughs> there are times I would say look after your brother there are times I'd say to them go make sure your brother's okay there's other times I'd say, go and carry your brother's bag because he's a lot smaller than you and the bag's heavy for him. Go bring a glass of water because your brother's thirsty and he's too sleepy to get down and go get it for himself. I don't know about you. There's a lot of stuff I'd tell him to do. And when I tell him to do this, he's like, go clean up the room is one of those classic ones. Your clothes are still in the dishwasher. Put it out, is another one. Dishwasher, washing machine. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge chance it could be in dishwasher. <laughs> there's a huge chance it could be. But anyway, put it out. You know, instructions that are given in a household. How would, I, I don't know about you, how you'd respond. I'll tell you how I respond in a minute. How would you like it if your child says, Mom, I've heard it many, many times and I remember it. I, I, I've memorized it. It's an incredibly inspirational verse. I've heard it preached. I've heard it talked to me many, many times. And I know it really well. And I have a great plan. At about this weekend, my friends are going to come for some sleepover. And over a cup of tea or over a pizza, we will have a study session to discuss these things that were talked about. I don't know how you'd react. I know I'm originally from India. I know here you might give the instruction sometimes and say, could you please? Can you please do this? But where I'm from... I gave birth to my kids, they did not give birth to me, so we got the order right. Yeah. Hey, that's where I come from. <laughs> where I come from, there's a little order. That's why I gave birth to them, they didn't give birth to me, you know, it's as simple as that. And so where I come from, it's not can you please, it's go, make sure your brother's okay. Go make sure, give your brother a hug. You know, whatever. Just a simple instruction. So if they come back to me and say, we'll discuss this over a study time with our friends, whether we should follow this instruction or not, you would not want to know what my response is going to be. <laughs> Amen. And it would be quite risky to say it on live. You all can guess what my response is going to be. You see, you know, I'm not from around here when I grew up. So when I grew up, nobody ever would say to me, Go sit on the stairs or go to your room and have a think about what you did. Like that wouldn't happen. We would ensure that our instructions carried out. But you see the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter number 28 verse 19. Go and make disciples. And in the book of Mark chapter number 16 verse 15. Go and preach the gospel to all the world. <laughs> now the children of God say, yeah, I think we should, uh, we should discuss that over a home group. <laughs> Church has scheduled a home group. And you know, we're going to have our friends together. And uh, we'll talk about it. Well, we memorized the scriptures. What would the Father in heaven, what would your Father in heaven and my Father in heaven say? 
I'm glad you memorized the verse. But go, make disciples. Go, preach the gospel to all the world. Oh no, but my heart is round about Keith Lee. Nobody asked you that. Go preach the gospel to all the world. Amen. Go therefore and what? Make disciples. Love your brother or your neighbor as yourself. It does not come up with the connotation. I'm so glad the, the Bible was not written in British politeness. Please, could you go and make disciples? There is no please and there is no could you. Go make disciples. It's same as if as a mother I'm telling my son, go and give your brother a hug, make sure he's okay. And he says, I'll get my friends down and we'll have a Bible study on it. No, go do this. Following instruction is absolutely paramount. Our God, the Father who sits on the throne is called a righteous judge. And when he gives an instruction, it cannot be taken casually. But we might come up as very smart people. You know, of course we are that smart. We, we have a lot of smartness behind us. So we would come to him and say, well, you know, Lord, I don't really know how to make disciples. Well, we will teach you once. Well, that's what we do with our kids, right? I don't know how to fold my clothes. Well, I'll show you once. And if need be, I'll show you again. Well, if you're struggling, I'll show you a third time. But do it. That's the way you learn. Have you ever done that? Dishwashers loaded the wrong way. It's okay. This is the way to do it. Second and third time. Keep doing it until you perfect it. Have you ever done that with your kids? And how many of us have parents have been, okay, don't raise your hands, have been strict concerning it with your kids and say, I expect it to be done. Father in heaven expects it to be done from all our lives. Go and make disciples. It is not an option. It is not a divine suggestion. It is not a divine opinion. It is an absolute command from our Father. If you could hear the voice of God and you want to know the will of God for your life and the call of God on your life, this is it. Go, make disciples. Go preach this gospel to all the world. Recipe for divine success is following instruction. The Bible says in the book of you know, the word of God is, is, is an instruction manual. It is full of instructions. Christian life is not a life without instructions. It's not a life where we just say, Oh, I love Jesus and he loves me and I can do what I want to do. Uh, King Solomon says here in the book of Proverbs, he says, My son, give heed to my instructions. My son, pay attention to my instructions. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. They are like graceful ornaments around about your neck. Wear them with happiness that you are getting some instructions to follow. Now come on, say this with some conviction. I am ready to follow some instructions. My father is instructing me to make disciples. So I will learn how to make disciples. Are you all with me? Is the job of a pastor to make disciples? It's every one of our jobs to make disciples. And it's not a suggestion. So amen. So you, Now we're in January. We've got 11 months to go. Amen. By the end of this 2020, we're going to have some disciples. Amen. Call some people around for coffee. <laughs> but don't discuss about whether we can carry out the, the command or not. Get your friends and say, come on, let's tidy up the room. Get your friends and say, come on, let's uh, wash the clothes. If you get your friends around, you're smart. You're not doing it alone. Amen. Get some people around you and say, come on, we're going to save some souls. Amen. How many know that this is true even at work? If you really want to be successful, you've got to follow instructions. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. The Bible says, um, Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel, stood this and said, said this, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. 
It is necessary to have somebody in your life that will give you some instruction. Amen. Amen. It is necessary. Now, when instructions come to you, nobody likes it. Because we live in a world where we don't like to be told what to do, right? That's the kind of world we live in. But you see, instruction is the safeguard of our life. As every child here, you, you, you are not the parent because you are given to a parent for divine growth. You have to follow their instruction. Amen. Now then you'd say, well, my mom don't know better. There are other moms that know better than my mom. Everybody gets this. And so why should I follow your instruction? You know what? They're not your mom. I am your mom. So you got to follow my instruction. What if your instruction is not so beneficial to me? Well, that's fine because you're better off following some instruction than being like a ship uh, anchored in the dock. Because if you follow some instruction, you're moving. Nobody can guide anybody that's not moving. While you're stood in the dock thinking, which way should I go? And I wouldn't go any which way because I wouldn't follow anything just in case it's wrong. No, take a wrong direction. Because if you take a direction, we can steer you. You see these two people, the widow of Zarephath and Naaman had this incredible nature in them. They took the instruction despite of how odd it looked. Go dip in Jordan for seven times. Well, why should I do that? They overcame, he overcame that and he actually did it. And the widow of Zarephath, I mean that's, that's even tougher than dipping in Jordan. Her and her son has got just the last piece of flour and a little bit of oil to eat and die. But God saw her heart. God saw that this widow would do as she is told. So God said to Elijah, go to her. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A lot of the time people are sick because they wouldn't do as they're told. Sorry. A lot of the time people are broke because they wouldn't do as they're told. Amen. To the broke people, we have incredible scriptural instruction. Don't spend more than you make. Amen. You will not be broke if you don't spend more than you make. To the sick people, believe that Jesus healed you with all your heart and confess it with your mouth. And people do it two days, three days, four days, five days, six days. And they say, well, I've done it for 15 days. I'm fed up. I feel like I'm repeating like a parrot. Listen, you're not a parrot. You're a human being and a speaking spirit. You can create your world with the words of your mouth. That's how God created the world. And that same spirit that created the whole world dwells on the inside of you. Stop being lazy and confess the word. Simple instructions. But say, well, I've come to church and I've heard it and I've heard it and I've heard it. Then why are you not doing it? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is good stuff. Trust me, this will do you good. Are you all okay? I want everybody to be doing well. My heart is that you do well. But listen, I can't do well and neither can you if you don't follow divine instruction. When I read the word of God and it gives me an instruction that says go do something, I have to go do it. I can't study it for 2,000 years. I have to go do this. If I don't do this, I can't have no more. Amen. Amen. Now you feel in your heart, you want to be dis discipled and you, you know, and want to learn how to disciple. We have a discipleship manual in this church that covers all the fundamental things that is needed to disciple anybody else. And we have people like Pastor John and Lynn and Pam and Alan here and you know, uh, Pastor Josh and myself, Val and Brother David, these people have done the discipleship course. We have Cynthia in the church. You can approach any of them and say, hey, can you take me through the discipleship course? I want to learn how to disciple somebody. So this doesn't have to be sort of within the church and allocated. These are the people that they know what they're doing. You can approach them and say, I want to be discipled. I want to disciple somebody else. Go make disciples is not an option. Are you all with me? 
I don't want to turn up to heaven and God tell me, well, I told you to tidy up your room a thousand times and you never listened to me. Amen. Come on now. We wouldn't like it if our kids do it. How would Jesus feel when we don't follow his instructions? Recipe number, uh, follow, following instruction was the first ingredient for this recipe. The second one, are you ready? Real relationship with Jesus. Real relationship with Jesus. Another part I'd like to say, absolutely no assumption. Real relationship. Real relationship is never based out of assumption. We can't make assumption concerning anything. In business and in, uh, in, uh, in spiritual life, uh, making assumption is one of the very damaging things that we can do. In business, we can make assumptions. Well, this is not a good market time right now. We can make assumptions like people are not going to buy these products. And we can make assumptions like uh, they, this particular demographics won't take my stuff. Listen, uh, just think about it. McDonald's is selling the worst burgers everywhere. It's still selling. Even though people say it tastes of cardboard, they still go back and buy it. And they still eat it. The number of times I've taken something from McDonald's and said, I'm never going back there again. I have. Right? I don't know how many have done that. I said, I will never go back there again. And I have again gone back there. So even if it's a bad product, don't make an assumption that nobody's going to buy it. Amen. Assumptions are not facts and assumptions are not based on anything. People make assumptions. They don't like me. Well, how do you know? You're not a mind reader. Amen. Well, they spoke like this to me. Maybe that's how they speak. We, we are not here to make assumptions. And as, as, as bad as it can go in that direction, I'd encourage you not to make assumptions about God. Don't make assumptions about our relationship with God. You know what? I come from a culture where there are so many other religions. And I have tremendous interactions with the people of Muslim faith throughout my growing life. And uh, I've realized something that a devout Muslim would come in and say, you know what, there's a lot of similarity between us two. We believe in Abraham. We believe Jesus was a good prophet. We've also got a book and you've got a book. And so when we turn up with our book, they'll turn up with their book. And they can talk about their things and I'll say, Jesus came to say this and they'll say, well, Muhammad came to say this. And when we talk about, well, uh, Abraham is really our forefather, they'll say, well, actually, Abraham is ours too. When we get to Isaac, they say, well, not really, it's Ishmael. And they turn up with their book and we turn up with our book and we can talk. Ultimately, in that conversation, actually, nobody wins and nobody is touched. I've been there, I've done that, I've got the t-shirt, I'm speaking out a tremendous... They have tremendous respect for us. I have tremendous respect for them. They know their stuff and I know mine. They say, well, we also only have one God. We just believe that the instruction given to us is via somebody else and you believe it's via somebody else. What makes Christianity different is that Jesus Christ is God. Amen. And he came down to take our penalties, our sin, our sickness, our curses on him. And he took it and died on the cross and he rose again the third day. Well, when you say that, they say, well, we don't believe that. That's not in our book. So then comes this whole thing about, is your book right or is my book right? What makes the distinguishing between us and any other religion? Is real relationship. Because I can quote some stuff and they can quote some stuff. And in this day and age, they can quote more than we can quote. Let's get real. Because their kids go to the mosque after school every single day. And ours think that Sunday school is playtime. So fast forward a generation or two, they can quote a lot more than we can quote. What makes a difference between us and them? What makes a distinguishing between us and anybody is really knowing that Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. And knowing that alive Jesus as a person in our life, in the very person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Because you see, if we tell them 
about, well, I saw this miracle. They'll come up with, well, they saw this miracle. But then if we know that my Jesus is alive and he's with me, which means something happens. And that something is, if he is alive and if he is with me, then I can talk to him. And he hears me. And because he hears me, he will tell me or do something when I'm telling him to do it. Amen. Amen. That is the only one thing that makes a distinguishing, between, distinguishing difference between us and anybody else. If we come to church and we kind of know a whole bunch of this stuff, and we can quote it, they can quote it, and everybody can quote it, lives are not changed. Lives and our families and our environment and everything that we have only changes when there is real, quantifiable, qualifiable relationship. Why do I say quantifiable and qualifiable? You see, in a recipe, I could go put buckwheat flour. And instead of the same portion of milk with the same portion of flour, I could go put a, a small egg and a whole large jug of milk. It would not produce a recipe that I'm supposed to produce. I can, I have to quantify and qualify my relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I cannot turn up by assumptions and say, I have a good relationship with Jesus. When is the last time you heard him say anything to you? Amen. It needs to be quantified and it needs to be qualified. You need to sit up and say, you know what? There are so many prophecies given to us. God gave me a tremendous prophecy. And I said, Father, I'm waiting on that prophecy to come to pass. But this is not waiting as passively as it will come to pass when he wills. From the time that prophecy was given to me, absolutely every morning I would get up and say, God, I believe that, I believe that, I believe that. I believe that, I believe that, I believe that. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, I will increase the power that is on your life. And it will be more than the powers of any magicians and people that do witchcraft. Well, I've been longing for that increased level of power in my life. Now, when I've been praying, I, I got the prophecy from the time I got the prophecy I've been believing God and one fine morning when I was up in my bed praying early hours in the morning I saw the hand of God come upon my head and at that time I heard the voice of God now I'm increasing the power that is on your life to overcome every work of the magicians and witchcraft and I give you greater power than they ever ever possessed it was a real tangible experience in my life not a passing prophecy people receive prophecy and ignore it you are not making, it's not real. You got to make it quantifiable and qualifiable. Yes. Amen. 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 Don't say, oh, I love Jesus and you never shown your head in church. Amen. Amen. The two don't go together. Amen. This is the corporate body. Who is Jesus? The head of the church. Say, Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus. We are the body of Christ. Right? So if Jesus is the head of the church, he is the head of the church. He's just appointed people to run it, but he is the head of the church. We must be in to get trained and say, whoa, I need a quantifiable, qualifiable, real relationship with Jesus. Real relationship with Jesus. How does it go? Getting up in the morning and saying, Jesus, I love you so much. I love you. I've done things that don't please you. Forgive me. Teach me according to your ways. I love you so much. Come touch me. It's a real relationship. You can say the wrong thing and still be blessed. It's a real relationship. Yes. Amen. Yes. And in that real relationship, there is, it is only in that real relationship there is an increase of power or increase of wisdom or increase of grace or increase of peace or increase of any of those additional things that we really need to live in life. Amen. Amen. It is in that real relationship 
We will sit in the spirit and say, She karama hoso. Le mendre makula baharasti kere bahase. Your spirit is communing with the Holy Spirit. You're constantly aware that the Spirit of God is with you. You're constantly aware that the presence of God is over your life. And you begin to say, God, I thank you that you have a calling over my life. This calling is to be on fire for you and to serve somebody else. That, to, uh, that I, could, I could make another disciple. That I would win one more soul. That's the calling of God. That's the will of God. That is a written command of God over our life. God, that I would do. I would burn. I would burn with that fire of the calling of God that till people's lives are touched, I would not settle. Amen. Lord, that's my life. Set me ablaze. I want to talk to you. I want to, sh I want to worship you. And when you do that, there is an increase in power, increase in grace, increase in peace, increase in wisdom, increase in whatever we need. It's real and quantifiable. It's not just any, it's not just any figures. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter number one, verse eight, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon us, we shall receive power that we shall be witnesses. You know what? We can't witness what we haven't observed and seen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So when I turn up and say, you know what? I'm a witness of Jesus Christ then I must have witnessed him alive somewhere. Yeah. I must have seen him alive somewhere. It's a real quantifiable, Jesus is alive is not our motto statement, mission statement, vision statement, none of those. It's the reality of our life. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's not a cool thing we say in church because we've got nothing better to say. It's the reality of our life. My Jesus is alive. I know my Redeemer lives. Yes. And He hears my voice. And I'm a sheep, I hear His voice. I know Him. And unless that real relationship is quantifiable, and qualifiable don't live in assumptions we don't have divine success yeah. amen. amen hallelujah, hallelujah. divine success is when devil looks at you and say run a mile <laughs> divine success is when you recognize the spirits that is holding some things down Divine success is when you can tell the devil, take your hand off my child. Yes. Divine success is when you can tell your body, work. Yes. According to the alignment of the spirit, I did not ask you how to behave. Yes. Divine success is when you have your emotions under your control. Yes. When your emotions want to run ragged and say, I feel so hurt, you said to your hurt, get back down where you belong. This is not the time and season for that. You, you, gotta, you gotta take some authority. Divine success is knowing that when he adopted you into his family, you were given the same powers that was given to Jesus. You know, I know we adopted, we, we adopted Pooji. I mean, you, you guys know that. We, ado we adopted, you know, in our house, she took over the kitchen. She'd say, I fancy eating this, so I am making it. Nobody ever asked me, can I make it? And so I look at, okay, so what are you making? And I said, well, that's not a very healthy, that's quite. She says, keep your nose well out of it. I know it's not healthy, but I fancy eating it. I am making it. So the bottom line is if I want to, I can participate in it and if I don't want to, stay hungry. <laughs> Kitchen is taken over. You see, that's how children behave when they don't have an orphan spirit. Yes. They only return your stuff every now and again. I saw the scissor in her room the other day. I said, please can I? No, that's my scissor. I said, please, can I have a comb back? I'm fine, mine. No, that's mine. Now I'm giving it to you. I need it back. I said, but I bought these. <laughs> she says, I know you did, but it's mine. <laughs> that's how children behave. I know English families are a little different. We come from the East. Everything you have belongs to your kids. Yes. Amen. So the kids know that they are not with an orphan spirit. Everything that we have belongs to our kids. 
We're not there to have things for us. We're there to have things for the kids. So I was explaining that to my kids one day and their eyes went to my MacBook Pro. <laughs> well, they said, you know, by what I've explained, they should be able to have mine. I said, listen, if it lasts that long, although you are children, you are heirs to what we have, but while you are a child, you are also under time. I, got, I had to quickly get to Galatians chapter 4, verse 1, 2, 3, you know, before I lost my Mac. <laughs> I haven't got many things left. Because normally boys don't take them, now I got a girl, she's took them all. <laughs> children do not behave as orphans in your own house. They never say, please, can I, I, I know some things are culturally, but listen, Jesus was from the Eastern culture. In our house, kids open the fridge. In our house, people come as guests, open the fridge, take whatever is there, eat it. Amen. We come from the Eastern culture. We're not like, oh, that was for my dinner. Anybody come hungry, they can eat a whole lot. We'll find something else to eat. It's called having a confident, secure spirit. And knowing that we will not go without provision if somebody ate you out of your fridge. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. This is extra material free. <laughs> Amen. So I carry a little bit of that. Like I went to Pam and I said, please can I have some toast, some butter and some marmalade. You know, you just make yourself home. Because that's how we are. Children have to have that strong sense of understanding that this is their household. They are the inheritors of what we have. Father God said to us very clearly, you are joint heirs with Christ. Yes. Did he say you will one day become a joint heir with Christ? No. What does the Bible say? You are joint heirs with Christ. You are joint heirs with Christ. And then again, the Bible says in the book of 1 John, he says, as Jesus is, so are you in this world. Yes. Divine success is due to the result of no assumption, real relationship. You and I know that if I'm adopted into the family of God, then I have every blessing as Jesus has. All these blessings, including power, wisdom, grace, is progressive so it was in Jesus' life. Amen? He didn't start off at the highest. It is progressive. We have to start believing God for it. We have to start believing God for it. We have to start believing God to increase the power that is in my life. Increase the wisdom that is upon my life. James chapter 1 verse 5, that's what the Bible says. If any of you lack wisdom, come to me and ask. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Well, asking's good as long as you're ready to follow the instruction. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Sometimes we have asked and asked and asked and asked and asked. And I don't think he's going to give us sometimes many more answers if you're not ready to follow what he told us to do in the first place. Amen. And I pray that today you will remember these two recipes. And I just want to finish off with this story. Are you all good? Yes. So don't come uh, to church thinking that it is something that we have to do. We must have that real relationship with Jesus. And that relationship has to be what? Quantifiable and qualifiable. Some, what, what do I mean by that? Somebody else should be able to look at you and say, I know you've been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, that's what they did with the apostles. They said in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter number three, we know they have been with Jesus because these were uneducated, basic fishermen. Look at how they speak and how they do and what power they have. They wouldn't have been able to do this if they had not been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to remember divine success is knowing for sure all your rights as the children of the living God that you and I are adopted into the family of God and adopted children just behave like real ones. Amen. Amen. And the real one is our example, Jesus Christ and we are adopted and we got to behave like him. Listen, real success is if you don't see Jesus behaving like how you're behaving, get in line quick. Amen. Amen. Okay, something happened and we're whining over it, crying over it, just, just, just blaming everybody else over it. Jesus says, go, love your brother, or love your sister as yourself. Go give him a hug. Jesus says, go give him a hug. I don't want to. No, no, quick, get in line with how Jesus is. Quick, get in line. Follow that instruction quick. Are you all with me today? Now, Jesus 
uh, in the book of Luke chapter number 7. He was so anointed. He was walking about doing good. You know, the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, Jesus was, um, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power that he went about what, doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. So Jesus was just walking into Nain, a place called Nain. And there was a dead body being carried out of the son of a widow. Now in that culture, if the widow is old and they have a mature son, the son's taking care of the mom. That mom is not able to work, so her, her food, her eating, her living depends uh, on that son. The son is dead. The, the, the mother is crying, not just because the son has died, also because of the future. What's going to happen to her? There's no way of living. That's just the olden times, you know, there's just what to do. Jesus walks about. Now I want you to observe the scriptures there. The lady didn't ask Jesus to heal the child. The mother, he just saw a mother weeping so bad, Jesus walks up to the weeping mother and says, do not weep. Walks up to this dead body and says, now get up. Hands this boy over to the mother and says, here's your son. Nobody had faith there. Nobody believed for a thing. Jesus had compassion on somebody. He didn't know them. He was not a friend or a relative to them. Jesus is just going about his daily life and sees that level of suffering and sees that mother's tears. How is she going to be able to live? And Jesus says, I want to give her child back. divine success is walking like Jesus it's not going to person of another faith and say look I've got my book and you've got my book and I know a lot of stuff from my book and you know a lot of stuff from your book that's not it how much do I know my God Amen. that I would go about doing good because of me some good is happening Amen. somebody who didn't even believe for anything is getting healed Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the Christian life I'm calling you to. Anybody ready for it? Amen. If you are and you want to make the commitment to say, I want to follow your instructions, I want you to come to the front. If you are and you want to make the, make the decisions, says, God, I want to follow your instructions. And I want a quantifiable and a qualifiable relationship with the living God. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. As many as are led by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. And you want to say, just come, please just come to this, this front and just fill it. Because I, I, I'm believing God here. I'm believing God here this morning. Please come through this way. There's plenty of space. I'm believing this morning, God, anoint us. I'm going to pray that everything that holds you back from knowing Jesus as the most real person in your life, that devil is destroyed from this Sunday. You must know Jesus and he, you know his voice. You must be able to hear his voice and you must be able to say, my Jesus said... I know the voice of my master, my Jesus said, and I must follow him. Amen. Amen. It's going to happen right now. Come on, let's close our eyes, lift our hands to heaven. <laughs> Father, I thank you for your anointing in this place. Everybody just close your eyes and begin to yearn and hunger from the bottom of your heart. Begin to call upon the name of Jesus and say, Jesus, come and touch me like never before. Lord, I don't want to spend 2020 in another, uh, in another cycle of motions. I want to follow your instruction. And I want to be able to hear your voice. Spirit of the living God, you said to me that you anointed the prophets and the priests on their right ear, on their right thumb, 
and on their right foot you anointed them that they would hear your voice clearly and they would walk in your ways i pray right now holy spirit god let your hand come upon everyone here in the name of jesus christ of nazareth fire of the holy spirit just come upon everybody that is desiring here to say i want to follow your instructions and i want to live in your ways and i want to know you jesus i don't want to be called a christian who knows the book i want to be called a christian who knows jesus who has been with jesus whose powers are increasing by the day whose wisdom is increasing by the day who has grace abounding and multiplying by the day who has peace increasing and abounding by the day who has victory increasing upon increasing and increasing who has glory from glory to glory lord i don't want to have a mediocre christian life i want to know you jesus Oh I want to know you Jesus. I want to walk with you more than I know anybody else. I want to know you Jesus. And I want to hear your voice and I want to obey your voice. I don't want to be like living in Israel and still missing my blessing. I don't want to be a leper in Israel and still be missing my blessing. You sent Elisha to Naaman. I know oh God you sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. Jesus. 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 There is packages in heaven for every one of us. There's packages in heaven for every one of us. Some devil somewhere is oppressing and opposing some some stuff. Sometimes it's the words of our own mouth. But today oh God, forgive us every negative words we have spoken. Every negative words we have spoken, forgive us God. Touch our hearts today Holy Spirit. Touch our hearts to this presence of the living God. Father, I thank you right now. Oh, rikashetre makola bahase. Lebo rekala bahasha dramahando lo bose. Le mese ke satula bakat de rekarosto. Le ker shetele baba basoto lo bobo. Ke rekeshetele re yahasate. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus that I pray we are able to hear your voice that if we are able to walk in your ways every work of Satan that has interrupted your life and the hearing of the voice of God right now I cut it off in Jesus name. Father in the name of Jesus every devil of oppression every devil of depression every devils of delays every hindering devils in the name of Jesus get out of the lives of these precious people oh my Jesus you are the yoke destroyer you are the one that anoints us you are the one that baptizes us with the holy spirit and fire Lord we are your children. We are your children. We are your children. We are your children. We are called to increase. We are called to be blessed. We are called to abound. We are called to be victorious. Lord in the name of Jesus, we your children ask your forgiveness for entertaining Satan and his agendas from this day. We will not involve in satanic thinking we will follow your instruction of love of peace of joy of patience of temperance of self control oh god we are your children we are your children the land should know that we are the disciples of the living god we are the disciples that make disciples oh, father i thank you your fresh fire come upon every one of our heads come upon every one of our heads set us a blaze for your kingdom set us a blaze for your kingdom there be a new call upon our life to reach one more soul for jesus to transform one more soul for jesus there be a call upon our life to bring in the funding for god's kingdom there be a calling upon our life that we would be like the people who were given talents the five shall become 10 that two shall become four Hallelujah. that nobody would hide their talents that we your children will trade with what you have given us 
that we will begin to trade every holding spirit i come against it in jesus name i pray oh god that every dead sea shall turn into rivers of living water every dead thing shall come to life every body that is sick shall be healed in jesus name every mind that is oppressed shall be set in freedom every generational curses are cut off in jesus name you are the head and not the tail you are above and not beneath o shaka satala mahandolo bose ire makala bahose erre mani khalo bohasho tholobo le mendere bakila bahashe rikala baba so tholobo hose erre makala bahashe fire 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 of the holy spirit touch every one of us touch and engulf every one of us shire mani khalu sene khare maste ke le bare kila mahashe re mene kila bahase prosper in jesus name that you shall hear the voice of your father and the voice of a stranger you shall not hear the voice of a stranger you shall not hear in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus oppression is falling off you depression is falling off you begin to do something hallelujah in 2020 begin to do something spend some time with jesus and whatever he tells you to do that do it whatever he tells you to do that do it hallelujah she kala bakara bahasen dere makila ya ha o shadala bahasen te whatever he tells you to do do it and she kese dere mahase tele ya hasa le bere na kala mahase ele makase tere ya don't let life get in its way don't get things get in the way power of the holy spirit she kere makula bahase erre mane makila bahase te Era bahasho tolobo thank you lord for your anointing thank you lord for your anointing thank you lord for your anointing